I moved my family out of our house a week ago and I'm glad we did. I think the first thing that struck me as off is the fact that all the houses on that street had been built sometime in the 1980s. The odd bit about that is the fact that nobody had actually lived there. In almost three and a half decades, nobody had ever lived in that house. We settled into the home and we felt really happy there, I think. Although I find it hard to believe now. We wanted this place to be our forever home and bizarrely it just felt perfect. When in actuality there was something very deeply inherently wrong about the place. The tension began on one typical gray London morning. My wife was going to drop off our four-year-old son Timmy at school, which usually takes about half an hour. It was the oddest thing. As soon as she shut the door behind her and I was alone, I became aware of a feeling that I hadn't felt before. I refused to accept the thought, but a tiny part of my subconscious expected that there was some intruder in the house. Hello? Is, is someone there? It was incredible how quickly the mood shifted as soon as my wife stepped into the house. As soon as I was no longer alone, the uncomfortable feeling lifted and I could actually feel the warmth of the central heating. The next morning, I did the school run. I, I was driving back when I got a call from my wife and her tone was very casual. It almost sounded forced and she was only asking when I would be back, but in a prolonged way, as if she wanted to keep the call as long as possible. She didn't mention anything when I returned regarding the feeling, but through her smile, I could tell something was up. To be honest, it was nothing really, just a feeling that people get sometimes. A, a house that hasn't been lived in for decades might take time to warm up to its new owners, I guess. The next day, while my wife was out getting the groceries, I made a little discovery. The strange feeling grew more intense in certain parts of the house. The thing about these places is that they were the only parts of the house with mirrors in them. With time, I came to hate those parts of the house and those mirrors. Nothing new happened for about a week. I just avoided being in the house by myself and my wife did the same. It was a new house, so we didn't want to spoil our first days there with negativity, so we never discussed the uncomfortable feeling. At least our little boy didn't seem affected. Timmy was playing just as happily as ever with his toys, and he even managed to invent an imaginary friend to play with. There was this one night, however, uh, I woke up to use the bathroom and I was shocked by how cold it was. It wasn't safe how chilly it was in there. I, I looked at myself in the mirror for a bit and then sat on the toilet to do my business. That mirror was giving me a bad feeling. I kept imagining that I could see something moving around in the mirror and yet there was nobody else in the room but me. Not even a fly or a bug. It happened at least three times and then I got up to wash my hands. I just stared into the mirror for a while just to make sure. It eventually made me uneasy, so I hurried back to bed and actually found myself hiding my face with the covers. I think I saw something moving in the mirror again next week, and, and, and the next. I think I even saw a face in the downstairs hallway mirror as I walked past for a split second. Of course I knew it was only my imagination. It was getting more irritating than frightening, so I decided to ring up one of those priests, you know, the, those spiritual sorts who know how to brighten up places with negative energy in them. She turned up while our son was at school, a, a frail old woman who must have been at least 80 years old. Her son dropped her off since she was very weak and unable to walk the distance. In spite of how bony and old she was, she made the place feel very secure and comfortable. I almost wanted her to stay with us so that we could be assured that we would have no negative energy. She told us that she had burnt some incense in some of the rooms and that she was going to go over the rooms again just to clear out any remaining negativity. But then suddenly she went stiff and her quivering smile became a screwed up scowl and her watery eyes hardened. We thought she was having a stroke and we reached for the telephone to call an ambulance. She turned to us and told us to do nothing of the sort. She told us not to touch anything and not to move. We listened and watched dumbfounded as she rushed to the wall with impressive speed and pressed her ear up again against it. She whispered some words which we couldn't hear and she seemed to be receiving a reply as her expression changed and contorted. Whatever she was hearing couldn't have been good because she gave a loud shriek and sprang away from the wall. The old woman grabbed my wife by the shoulders and shook her firmly and said, You don't leave this house. Why not? I asked. Back in the walls. There's man living the walls, bad man, man leave the walls. The old woman snapped out of her trance and without even putting her shoes on, stepped outside the house and urged us to come with her. Her son picked her up and when he saw her in a nervous state, he gave me and my wife an unfriendly look before driving away. 
man in the walls. It was chilling to hear that and the look of terror on the old woman's face convinced us that she was serious. After much conversation, we just agreed that she was doing that to frighten us or that she was just old and batty, but the phrase stuck with me. Man in the walls. I even admit I put my own ear up to the wall to see if I would hear anything. I was relieved to hear nothing. As I was slipping into bed, relieved that the day was over, a cry from my wife got me out of bed. She rushed into the bedroom with a look of utter horror on her face. Man in the mirror, she screamed. Man in the mirror. I had enough sense left to me to realize she wasn't talking about the Michael Jackson hit. She was genuinely terrified. I stormed into the bathroom and looked into the mirror. It, it, it was just a normal reflection. There, there was nothing there. I, I stood there for a while and, and then I began to cry. I was too tired to carry on with this. I forced myself to believe that there was nothing funny going on. I didn't convince myself. We went to bed and I was about to turn out the lights when my wife told me something that made me shudder. You know, Timmy's been saying some weird things lately, she said. It, it might just be a coincidence, but what that old woman said about a man in the walls, it, it seems to fit with something that Timmy's been talking about. Do you know anything about his imaginary friend? I chuckled. Well, I know that Timmy spends an awful lot of time with it. Uh, what does he call it again? Uh, wall man. Oh, y yeah. Oh, God. I realized just then the creepy connection. Wall man. Timmy's been saying things about his friend, and he told me the other day that he's got a round face with black eyes and a big smile, and he's really thin so that he can fit in the wall. I found it cute at the time, but now I don't know. I got the biggest chill I've had in a long time. Well, there's more. We, we were in the park, and I asked him if he wanted to invite Wallman for a picnic. He said he couldn't. He told me that Wallman is only in our house, and he never leaves. That one made me laugh a bit when he told it to me, but then he gave me this serious, worried look and said, Don't laugh, Mommy. Wallman doesn't like you and Daddy. He hates you. He says he only likes me. I shuddered and took a deep breath. The air suddenly felt colder and more hostile. You know, I said to my wife after a period of silence, I, I really do think we should move out. This stuff is creeping me the hell out. I don't, I don't think I can sleep now. I don't feel safe. Nevertheless, we both managed to sleep after a bit more conversation on where we could move to. It was a Saturday next morning, so we had a bit of a lie-in. As I waited for the kettle to boil, a voice caught my attention. It was Timmy. He, he was raising his voice. I found him looking up at a mirror, tears running down his cheeks in the downstairs corridor in a heated argument with somebody. No! If you don't say sorry, I won't be your friend anymore! No, no, no! I don't want to! You're not nice anymore! Go away! Go away! I don't want to go with you! I rushed along and lifted him up, carrying him away from that mirror. Wallman wants me to live with him in the wall. He wants me to, he wants to take me in the wall, but I told him I don't want to. Oh God. I handed him to my wife, my voice shaking. I can't put up with this bullshit any longer, Wallman. Where the hell are you? Come out, you bastard. I had never spoken in front of my son like that before, but he didn't seem unsettled. He seemed glad that I was angry at his imaginary friend. My wife took him upstairs while I raged on for a bit. We had breakfast in silence, and after a while, it all seemed okay. And then something amazing happened. Nothing. Nothing at all. There wasn't even a weird feeling of anxiety anymore. It felt like a normal home should. Then a whole week went by, and it was Sunday again. Without a single weird thing happening, our house was beginning at last to feel like a home. We had less work, so we spent more time with Timmy, and he seemed to forget about his imaginary friend, which was actually a relief for us. That imaginary friend had seemed like something else. It seemed wrong to be coming from the imagination of a four-year-old. We thought everything was going to be fine, but then something made us think twice. Yellow mold had started to grow in circular patches around the house. The patches were about the size of footballs and they gave off a rotten smell. We decided to leave it for a while, but the patches turned up suddenly in more places and they were too ugly and stinky to stay. We called in a man to investigate and sort out the mold problem, and while he worked, the three of us paid a visit to my parents-in-law. We got a call from the man dealing with the mold at about 8 o'clock in the evening. Evening. He sounded troubled and he told us to come home quickly. We were very agitated throughout the car journey and when we saw a policeman standing around our home, my wife looked as though she would cry. A policeman stopped us in our tracks as we made our way towards the front door. A stop right there, sir. I, I highly doubt that you and especially your wife want to see what's been found inside your home. You ain't suspected now, so don't be afraid, but I tell you, mate, it's ghastly. 
I went in to find that where the patches of mold had been, there were holes in the wall. Men in uniform and masks were carrying out small objects and plastic bags out of the house. The mold specialist was sitting down with a cup of coffee on the sofa, his head in one hand. An inspector was waiting to speak to me. Now, don't take this the wrong way, sir. We're not accusing you of anything. The things we found date back at least a decade, judging by the state they're in. Then I was told once I had promised to remain calm that behind each of the 16 patches of mold were the bones of a small child that had been found curled up inside the wall. The children were all between the ages of 2 and 5 and were recognized as children that had gone missing in the area over the past 30 years or so. Our son never got told about the children in the walls, and hopefully he'll never ask so we don't have to tell him about it. He never mentions his imaginary friend Wallman, and he seems happy enough in our new home, as do all of us. I don't want to tempt fate or anything, but our new place seems just right. Nothing weird going on here. There's one more thing. A few days after he made his dreadful discovery, the mold specialist arranged to meet me at my workplace. He told me that he had something dead strange to show me, and it was a picture that he had taken on his mobile phone the day he'd been at our house. It was a picture of the mirror in the corridor. Although the quality was a little grainy, a face could be seen very clearly in the mirror. It just popped up at the bottom corner of the mirror, a white face with a wide, thin-lipped mouth and large black eyes. It had very clean, neat teeth, and it didn't appear to have a nose or any hair, but perhaps it was just because of the quality of the image. It was grinning broadly and its eyes were wide open. The picture was taken from an angle so that the photographer could not be seen, only the face and the rest of the room. But what scared me the most about the face was the fact that it was there. It was actually there. I never truly actually believed in the paranormal until then, but now I'm, I'm open-minded. I only have one mirror in my house now, in the bathroom, and I avoid it like the plague. And sometimes, only sometimes, when I'm alone at home and it's quiet, I press my ear to the wall and listen carefully. Then I look into my mirror for a while just to make sure there isn't anything else in there. Perhaps you should give it a go too. After all, some houses are strange and some houses have been there for a very long time. With enough time, I think things come into existence in empty places that shouldn't be allowed to exist. Trust me. If you see any strange faces in the mirror, there's a possibility there could be something in your walls. Afraid? My advice? Just brush your teeth quickly.